the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about all the Hello, fun things everyone. on the Speculars Poopy um, Halloween, October 31st <laughs> edition of Yay. Weekly Daily Wednesdays. I'm Ben. That's Jill. And that's Pedro, mm -hmm. who is dodging Hello. the sound of spoopy firecrackers, right? Yeah, no, apparently they just sell uh, fireworks at the local Tesco's here. So, yeah, no, the, the Halloween fireworks are a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Traditional <Cool>. UK fireworks, <laughs> man. I don't know. I did not know this was a thing. I uh, mentioned this in the pre-show, but uh, yeah, I come from Portugal. Fireworks are a highly regulated thing where I'm from. So uh, yeah. yeah the... <laughs> Jill, what's up? What's new with you? Uh, oh, well, a lot has been going on with me, but I can't quite say yet. I like how you uh... pretend you didn't know I was going to ask you that. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, something good has happened and it's kept me very busy, but it's going to have to stay a secret for a little bit longer. And of course, it does involve Linux and I will be able to tell you in a few weeks. So it's very exciting. I'm very new tease. Happy. Yes. Giant, <laughs> yeah. giant tease. <laughs> giant tease. <laughs> hey, beautiful people. I'm not allowed to report over here. I do have a big ask. If I am working on a multi-part series about... How do I record audio and podcast and all this junk in Linux? I need your questions. I need your thoughts. I need your hints, allegations, and things better left unsaid because I'm like way, way down the rabbit hole in a lot of this stuff. So like basic things I know I'm going to overlook that they're going to come to mm. me and like, oh, well, of course you would just know how to do that. Well, <laughs> somebody's like, what? What's that moon magic you're doing? Explain this. <laughs> So what we're trying to do is actively yeah. trying to prevent uh, YouTube comments of, how do I do this? Of course, you're always going to get the YouTube comments that are completely, wholly unrelated to whatever video that you've put up or a guide that you've yeah. put up. It's like, well, but, but how do I do this on OS Warp 2? Yeah, no, they read the title and they just assume. <laughs> it is kind of brilliant. Uh, OS Warp, man, I kind of brought that up because of our first story. Big Red, baby. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. Oh, the big one. Oh, oh man. Yes. The internet panicked collectively because <laughs> IBM is to acquire Red Hat, <laughs> completely changing the cloud landscape and becoming the world's number one hybrid provider. Oh, no. Uh, was this a good thing or a bad thing? Jill, what do you think? Oh, well, as we have talked about before, there has been speculation of an acquisition with Red Hat for a while now, including by, by Novell and Microsoft. <laughs> Actually, it makes sense, though, because to me, IBM, you know, they've been using Red Hat's cloud services for quite some time now. So this this really wasn't surprising to me, especially because we knew something was brewing. And Red Hat has the software and IBM has the hardware. And yeah, IBM's AIX Unix is not really a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> to me, this is IBM playing catch up with Amazon AWS Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. So they want a piece of that pie, of course. <laughs> yeah. And it's <laughs> it's uh it's IBM, you know, between that and the speculation that was uh, a brew on the internet a while ago about Microsoft maybe buying Red Hat and then it turned out that they actually bought GitHub, but whatever. Um yeah, no, it's better to be IBM than Microsoft. At least Microsoft, I don't know. In a way, Microsoft is more overt about their uh, intentions and their practices. We don't really know much about IBM other than they're that company that used to be a big thing and now it's still mm -hmm. a big thing in the enterprise market, but doesn't really do much for anyone else. They even split Lenovo off to do to handle the uh, the user level laptops. So I think. Of all the major soulless entities that could have acquired Red Hat, which was in itself a pretty major soulless entity, uh, APM is possibly one of the least bad. And uh, yeah. Tom Abate in the uh, in yeah. the show notes, he left us uh, a question there. Does this mean anything for Fedora? That is a very good question. Nope, it's I all doom and fire. It's a dead project. <laughs> don't even know what Fedora <laughs> what. Never heard of it. Uh, this turns out that it's the largest software purchase in history 
Yeah. Yes. Thirty three point four billion dollars. Mind boggling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of expect to see uh, like TN getting replaced on their Linux uh, CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You're going to see TN for Telnet, help for Man Pages, and all sorts of other atrocities grafted from AIX into Red Hat. <laughs> And I'm only half joke. Hopefully, I'm 100% joking with that. One thing I did see is it, it straight up triggered Poe's Law from Leonard Pottering. He wrote mm -hmm. yes. about this announcement. Said, As you all know, um, where do we know Leonard from, Pedro? Uh, he's the developer of Pulse Audio, System D, and just about everything that's controversial in Linux nowadays. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes. And he writes, as you know, we've never been fans of portability. <laughs> Again, post law. Um, <laughs> it will come at no surprise that in light of recent developments, we will discontinue all non S390 ports of System D very soon now. Please make sure to upgrade to an S390 system soon. Thank you for your understanding. <laughs> okay, better find a, an yeah. empty closet because you're going to need that S390. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of interesting when you think about it because you were making the Microsoft uh, comparison and Microsoft mm -hmm. is in currently transitioning into something IBM already pulled off successfully yeah. was turning into yes. a services company. We know in IBM's exactly. case, it was mostly hardware, but they still do quite a bit of hardware on the enterprise side. Um, I got to tango with a Z, uh, what was it? Z1, the 19 inch air quotes around mainframe. They still do those things. They're pretty oh, yes. wild. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is trying to become a service company, but you know, they have GitHub and maybe they'll buy, uh, I, I don't know, uh, another Linux, maybe they'll buy Arch. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll talk about it in a little bit not right, right now <laughs> right now we're going to talk about fedora yes Yay. that distro that is currently in limbo no one really knows like uh, okay so what's uh what's going to happen well it's uh version uh, 29 it's currently out you can download it, you can play with it, uh, as they've been doing lately. They have the workstation server and atomic host spins. And of course, if you want a uh, specific um, architecture, you also have that. You have ARM devices, you have a power PC, S390, of course, <laughs> and everything else. So it's uh, business as usual. And on my end, I have the uh, ThinkPad X240 that I actually forgot to pick up from the couch earlier. Uh, and I read the update on that. Uh, Cinnamon threw a bit of a hiccup, but after I mm. rebooted once more after the update, it was fine. So it was just a hiccup as far as I could tell. I will eventually have to do that on the uh, Steambox 360 as well, but yeah, that's that's not going to be as painless. I have a sneaking suspicion. Man, I, the, everything you said is legit. I love Fedora. But man, oh man, did I get a case of the olds. Just yeah. right out of the bat. They said, you know, remember Core 1? I was like, yeah, that was like last week. 15 yes. <laughs> years ago, Jill. 15 yes. years oh, ago. years ago. But, yeah, uh, I still have a Fedora core shirt. <laughs> oh, um, oh. You know, there, there was a lot of like, rawr, when Red Hat's like, hey man, we're going to quit putting out just regular distros and we're going to do this Fedora thing. I'm like, no, Red Hat's dead, but you know, Fedora was great. I remember in putting on core one with my like first gen amd 64 and like no media codecs worked and I'm like this sucks <laughs> but I, I ran it anyway because there were 64 bits and that, that was really a fun thing back in the day but the door 29 has some neat features oh yes, yes it, it does um it comes now with the gnome 3.3 zero for the desktop uh which is awesome because it, it helps get rid of the uh uh memory memory quote leaks <laughs> they've been having problems with so it really is proving that and um it also um there's a version of it for the raspberry pi which enables zram for swap on arm v7 and aa arch 64 pre-generated images to improve performance and reliability on single computers such as the raspberry pi and that is actually to me this is was very important because there's very 
few uh, Red Hat based <laughs> distros available for the Pi because they they the memory usage is not very good. And um, th this should help that a lot. <laughs> and they're also uh, putting out a new Fedora scientific spin, which includes open source scientific and numerical tools, which mm -hmm. is really awesome. Fedora has always been very strong in the, um, the science and uh, uh, space. So that's a really good thing. Actually, one of the things I noticed immediately was when I rebooted the X240, uh, instead of it dropping to like a uh, just shutting the uh, the LCD screen down and then bringing it back up when Plymouth starts, it actually there's a smooth transition. It puts the uh, Plymouth uh, logo directly on the UEFI transition from the UEFI splash screen. So it's like, oh, no more sc screen blinking stuff. That's neat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Fedora cool. is like right now view one of the new hotness with the integrated Vegas. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of the only way to play that game right now. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> they got all those Mesa drivers. <laughs> Good to see it kicking yeah. on. Okay. Um Orange. Team Orange. <laughs> yeah, Team yes. Orange has something to say. <laughs> Yeah, so this is uh, Mark Shuttleworth, of course, the CEO of Canonical and Ubuntu, statement on the IBM acquisition of Red Hat. And as we have mentioned in the past, Ubuntu is the most popular Linux distribution for cloud server and, and enterprise infrastructure. And in this, this um, blog, he talks about um, this in this statement um, about Ubuntu, you know, being being uh, the most used and that Red Hat customers had switched to Ubuntu. And actually, after reading this article several times and reading between the lines, I felt like Shuttleworth was saying that Ubuntu will remain committed to business and usual and no company will be acquiring its assets. I guess in the way he, he talks about it and words, word, uh, words it, that Ubuntu is, you know, it's, it's going to be business as usual with Ubuntu. So that was, that was actually good to hear. And of course, many people in the community have speculated a Microsoft takeover of a bunch of There it is. Any there day. There yes. it is. <laughs> uh, we don't know what's going to happen, man. I, I, I kind of had to look at that. And I, I got to give them credit. You know, I use uh, 1804. I've been using the canonical okay. LTSs for a while now, which means that I give canonical, like, more crap than I would if I didn't use it because it's something that I use. It's like, I need this to work. But to their credit, uh, that didn't turn into a plug for Ubuntu server until the fourth paragraph. So, yes. <laughs> Yay. Well done. I like to see progress. Um, it, it's kind of like an Apple and Wrench comparison, though, because like Red Hat, you know, RHEL, whatever you want to call it, and Ubuntu, in, like in the server space, they are not in direct competition. Completely different bases. Now, 100% to its credit, and where you will see it, is in you know with a Ubuntu server a lot of adoption in cloud vps and you're going to see red hat and enterprise and things that will make your eyes hurt when you see the numbers tied mm -hmm. behind it you're like what mm. that's real yes it is real i get to deal with a lot of that stuff still um now interesting thought experiment because uh mike added a thing in our notes uh as a patron you can do that it's great you can yep. correct us before we make mistakes and even better yet, you can throw in some comments. So I wanted to throw this one in uh, about the name of 1904 <laughs> and that wonderful, wonderful name. It's not a beefy miracle. <laughs> Nay, no. it's a disco dingo. Disco dingo. Well, I think it's better than like bionic baby. fever. <laughs> so naturally, naturally, like any responsible adult, I typed in uh, disco dingo, cut safe search off. Do yes. with images. Nothing fun to report, unfortunately. <laughs> I just want to know what you two think of that because I think it was a missed opportunity. They could have went with deranged Dalmatian or yeah. my favorite, demonic Dodgson. Demonic Dodgson. That's good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's you uh, bunch of animal names. Uh, her. I have to remember, like, the first bit <laughs> of the name, which is Disco. Okay, Disco is going to be the code name that I need. If I need to go back to that distro <laughs> for some reason, I need to look for the Disco repo. 
That's yeah. all I remember. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all I remember. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually going back to the article, reading through it, it sounded a lot like, yeah, IBM bought Red Hat, but Ubuntu is so much bigger and better, you guys. It's not like we're losing anything. Uh, and to me, that's either a real... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, really... Pedro doesn't have a lot of friends, in case you're wondering. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> He says and the it's same either thing a... about me. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Uh, it's either a fit of jealousy boiling just beneath the surface, or someone is desperately trying to keep investors from focusing exactly on what happened, what happened. for IBM to buy Red Hat. Which reminds me, yeah. um, <laughs> where's that IPO? Seriously, where's, <laughs> where'd that go? <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> listen, IBM bought Red Hat because Red Hat has experience in, you know, that makes sense. Yes. It does. Those two companies, totes compatible. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I for actually, one, look you know, forward to OS Warp 4. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, IBM has actually been a really good steward to the open source community. They're really active at the conventions and, in, in fact, at OSS Summit. You could tell something was brewing just just the way they and, and that was two years ago. And I, I could tell that they were transitioning and that there was something going on because they were just really, really friendly <laughs> to to everyone there, which was awesome. But sometimes, you know, in the past at conventions, they would be a little bit more standoff. But I've noticed the last few conventions, they've been really, really, Ladies really and gentlemen, boys and girls, one Jill Bryant just implied that the only time <laughs> IBM is ever nice and you should be worried is if they need something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> IBM is that guy. <laughs> Soulless. Ahead. Oh boy! <laughs> this is a thing, man. Now, Pedro, you got to kind of clue us into this. I just wanted, you, yeah. I, I so didn't even as, know this uh, was a thing. You threw it in the notes. You're like, I guess we need to talk about this. To which I replied, <laughs> yes. talk about. What? I had already known about this for a while, but the team behind Solus wasn't, you know, talking about it. So I figured, you know what? I'm not going to bring it up. But now they have a wall of text talking about it. So I figured, you know what? Might as well touch on it. Well, it's, uh, yeah, um, IKEA has been missing for a while and a lot of people have been asking what the hell happened. And uh, they decided, yeah, let's tell people exactly what happened and what we've been doing and what the result of that was, which also explains a lot of the stuff that they've been doing. It's a big big wall of text oh and yeah <laughs> yeah no it's a venue we want to take it away you had the biggest thing in the show notes <laughs> you know compared yeah. to that wall of text what i did is i tried to summarize it but mm -hmm. um for those of you who don't want to decipher that wall of text in chat log format too just just in <laughs> case you thought it's like i can handle any wall of text nope this is written like a script Mm -hmm. I decided not to act it out. I was thinking, Pedro, do, do, do you do you want to like pretend it's play night? <laughs> uh, check it out. If we're gonna break this down real quick, real simple, I Ike, he's cool, he's an awesome person. But as Pedro pointed out, he is definitely missing an action. Uh, turns out the Solus project as itself was not Raptor bus proof. That if the lead was either hit by a Raptor or eaten by a bus, the project mm -hmm. would have trouble surviving. So as it turns out, mm -hmm. something went wrong. They had issues getting admin control and just basically all the control sectors that they needed to get Solus back up and running in Ike's absence. Most things, they're pretty much sorted. It's not going to be an issue. And turns out that according to them, a lot of things are in better shape now than they originally were. So mm -hmm. that's a good, that's yeah. a bonus soda, 100%. Also in there, they touched on the fact that Solus has applied to join the Software Freedom Conservancy. Yes, it's yes. That's awesome. going to give them some legal protection and all that fun stuff. And most importantly, development has resumed. Yes, because there yes. was a definite <laughs> slump in the development of Solus, but thankfully it's back. <laughs> now, um, one thing I do want to touch <laughs> on is kind of a big heads up. If anybody playing the home game finds themselves in a situation like this where yes. you're part of a team, and somebody's like, either like, hey, I'm out. Because you can take it a, a lot of ways. Sometimes people just get tired of the project. You know what? Peace out. You're like, whoa, I don't have all the control keys or anything like that. 
And mm-hmm. just some things to look at. Like they were talking about getting access to the Google account. That thing's gone. Don't, mm-hmm. I mean, Google's not going to be at any help with that. It is Google. You can export the data, set up a new account. And then they touched on like PayPal, Patreon, or any service that has financial personal data, like a tax ID address, bank info. You just let that go. That's not going to happen for a gang of reasons. Those companies yeah. cannot give control of those accounts to anyone else, nor should you ever want them to if that was your <laughs> account. That's yeah. the privacy <sighs> law. And no, that's just bad times. Uh, now, mm-hmm. just kind of like something, hopefully somebody's listening, maybe, and I can be of use for once ever, is <laughs> setting up a dead man switch email system. It is cheap. You can roll your own. There are services that will do yeah. it if you don't want to. As I was joking around, if you've watched the show for any amount of time before I had jury duty, I was like, hey, guys, uh, ignore that first email if I'm not back in three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's Aww. the email that shows up. And it was like, and that one's the nice one. That's the one's like, Vin probably forgot to write this thing and talk back to me. Go bug him. Tell him to do it. And after seven days, it basically just sends out the launch codes. And I'm like, here's everything you need. It's your problem now. Ha ha. It, it reads very close to that, too. <laughs> um, yeah, get something like that set up right now. If you're even if it's a loosely done project like we yeah. have here, because, you know, one person having access to absolutely everything can almost kill a project. Now, here's something I wanted to ask. Do you think this might be a good time to fork the solace project maybe put it under a different name uh there's no need because ike said that this was a team thing and it was the solace team from mm-hmm. the beginning that there was there was the core theme that's good uh, to know okay yeah the core team that included ike but there was also joshua and brian and a couple of others mm-hmm. so yeah no they're that team is there, and it's basically Joshua, uh, Peter O'Connor, and Brian Myers mm-hmm. now Brian. who are uh, uh, basically controlling where Solus is going, and they're doing the development and the community management and the communications and everything else. But yeah, no, uh, going back to like the Patreon thing, even without stuff like the GDPR, uh, mm-hmm. it would be a very bad precedent for any of those companies to give out that information just because. Someone said, oh, look, I'm part of this team and I want the contact info because the person has been a wall for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, no, 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 no. And I, know, I do but hope listen, that man, the Internet wants to like sharpen pitchforks for something. <laughs> that was like one of the things be PayPal or their hosting providers. And so it's like, listen, that that's not the fight you want to pick. They, they can't yeah. do anything. And to be fair, the hosting yeah. providers actually did good. They said, "You know what? Uh, you can take, for, right. yeah, you can take the info that was stored here. That's yours. So we'll give you that, but we won't give you access to the account. So that's what that's how it's going to go." I'm glad they get through it, and yeah. it looks like they came out mm-hmm. of it stronger. So I'm saying good. Jill, mm-hmm. do you got any thoughts? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well. You know, that, that it, it's so true. I mean, I, I understand that the for security reasons why these account, accounts can't be accessed, but this is a unique situation with the um, Solus core team in regards to Patreon. Um, uh, Joshua Strobel, the lead of the Linux of the Solus core team, wants us to stop supporting Solus on Patreon because they can't access the account due to Ike's absence. And you know that's understandable. They don't they don't have his credentials to get into the account. Yeah. Um, and I actually just canceled my Patreon donation to Solus. And here's what I wrote Patreon and tweeted tweeted um, for the reasons why the creator Ike Doherty is ill and not communicating, and the Solus core team cannot access this account to get funded. Please fix this Patreon so they can receive the money from this account that they deserve. And this is a little unique because it involves, it does involve a lot of money and um, it would be nice for the team to get compensated, but I understand Patreon side of it also. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it absolutely boils down to (laughs) like, they can't, Yeah. Yeah. but I'm sure the Solus team is on setting up because Patreon is a great way for little independent things or larger products Mm -hmm. to get funded. (laughs) They need to (laughs) get on setting up their own, but 
they're exploring other revenue streams. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. And right now they're mm-hmm. just saying, look, if you're donating money to Patreon to the Solos Patreon, do not continue that because we're not getting the money. Right. We're not even yeah. sure if Ike is getting the money because he's not saying anything. Communicating. So, yeah. Yeah. Going into a just hole. <laughs> cancel it, and we'll set something up later on. Mm-hmm. So and yeah, that's a sensible approach right now. <laughs> no. Yeah. Despite what Pedro would have you believe, the best way to download your Linux ISOs <laughs> not through the pirate bay. <laughs> well, <laughs> the pirate bay has they have its moments, but uh, no, this is Torrent CSV, and it's basically a collaborative vetted and the uh, vetted is italicized, so you know they mean it when they say it. Uh, yeah. Repository of torrents cons- uh, consisting of a single searchable Torrent CSV file. It's initially popular populated with a January seven, uh, 2017 backup okay. of uh, the Pirate Bay. One of the things is I got to read this out, though, for the audio listeners. Um, one of the things to be able to download from five years ago, uh, Ubuntu Linux Toolbox, 1,000 plus commands from Ubuntu and Debian Power. That, nope. That's um, straight up piracy. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that, that's, yeah. How you, that's, that's how you end up with a uh, no. compromised system. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a... Yeah shoddy looking pdf at best uh but yeah it's um it's literally just a csv file that you clone and you keep up to date with the gits it's hosted on gitlab and uh yeah it requires rust and yarn for some reason rust or yarn but mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> rust or yarn or yarn no. <laughs> both nah you just use one it was just just one. <laughs> Aww, it's both. It's more it's more spooky that way. But yeah, no, they uh the, the thing that got me is like it's a vetted repository of torrents. So it's just, they even italicize it. It's, no. No, 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 no. The Pirate Bay is a public tracker for a BitTorrent stuff. There yeah, no. If you're going to use it, here, listen, <laughs> this is a neat little um, project. I'll say that. If you're going to be using mm-hmm. torrents, are completely harmless by themselves. This technology is awesome, distributed yeah. file sharing. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to be getting torrents, make sure you get them from the actual projects page. Yes. <laughs> right? Jill. Don't yeah. go to public more trackers. To- that- <laughs> oh, yeah. They are yeah, more up to date and more secure. <laughs> but the, I thought this was actually really cool because you can, um, oh, it's a torrent neat. repository, you it- can search via command line or web server. It worked really well. I, I downloaded nobody, uh, man, nobody's you know, it's not a neat, Linux distro. I'm also <laughs> saying it's like people don't use Plex for piracy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's yeah. definitely in your wheelhouse. Oh yes, this is awesome. This is this is uh, uh, not GIMP online, as Ben says <laughs> in the show notes. <laughs> that was that was appropriate. This is Photo P, uh, Photo P <laughs> with a P E A. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, don't know. <laughs> I figured that something had been drawn there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is Photo P. It's a free online tool for editing fast raster art and vector graphics with support for PSD, um, XCF, and sketch files, which is really awesome. Right out of the box, you can you know import uh, GIMP, your GIMP projects and your Photoshop projects. And I've been um, using this for, for several years, actually. This is my favorite free online photo editor. And it's one of the most advanced and Photoshop-like in this space. And it has actually many of the features that professional photo editors um, um, you would expect to have, like selection tools, layers and layer masks, blend <laughs> blend modes, color adjustment tools, and image filters, and a great selection of fonts with previews. And that's actually important because most of these free ones have a horrible font selection <laughs> um, uh, tools. So, and you know, many of the other more sophisticated online photo editors either have free trials but charge for later use or have a free version that is lighter and a pro version you have to pay for like pixel or editor and that's just a pain pain in the butt but this is <laughs> this is a really nice um a really nice uh, free it's the most advanced free one you can you can get i've i've played with 
probably about 50 different ones. And this was really the best one out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, co-worker Yay! Dave is the person that uses Photoshop around the office. And he said that, yeah, this is all you need if what you're mm -hmm. doing is some light touches on a couple of uh, pictures that you need to edit right then and there. But yeah. uh, the moment he tried to do something that was more involved, uh, like the more elaborate filters and everything else, the performance running this through Slows the browser, down. they seem to, yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> it seems to not be ideal. <laughs> So yeah. are you trying to convince That's... me for one second that running uh, an advanced image editing <laughs> software in my web browser is not optimal? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, what would that do to all those Electron projects? Oh, wait, nothing, because they made a browser nothing. in Electron. Yeah. Hey, man, it's real. I was kind of surprised. I fitted, uh, I got a bunch of XCF templates for the show and stuff like that. I was like, take this one. And I was like, ha. Like, wow, touche. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Like yeah. Pedro said, you can do some basic image. I mean, that's all I know how to do anyway. Mm -hmm. After two decades of using GIMP, I kind of got the basic image editing <laughs> down. Uh, yeah. Cool. All this, in it, all this in our show notes. Go check it out. They're brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Security. That's a big, important thing yeah. that we're all paranoid about, and we adjust our aluminum socks. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is actually really, really cool. This is something we've been uh, kind of waiting for. This is Solo, the world's first open source security key that supports the newest oh, FIDO2 standard. Say it was Solo, that horrible movie that made. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, there's the newest FIDO2 standard for secure two factor authentication log on, login. And, you know, this is this is a, an open source version of the YubiKey. And I do love my Yubi keys, but the solo keys are much cheaper and completely open source, including the hardware and software. So you can you know manipulate the hardware as well. And one solo key will retail for seventeen dollars and fifty U.S. dollars, and one Yubi key is the 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 starting price is forty five. So big difference there. <laughs> and um, Yubi key though, um, without Yubi key, we wouldn't. Have a solo key because they were their um, Yubico of YubiKey fame is the one who helped draft the open UTF or universal second factor and FIDO2 standards used by the solo keys. So we have YubiKey to, to thank, to thank. And, um, and I, I still love my YubiKey too, but I'm looking forward to, I'm, I'm definitely going to buy a few of these. And they come in lots of pretty colors. <laughs> Pedro, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars will this set me back? Uh, not many, actually. You can get uh, the rule of thumb that they have on their Kickstarter. Seems to be every ten dollars gets you a uh, solo key. So if yeah. you're backing them at the like the thirty-four uh, dollar level, which they say is the best, you're basically paying for everything and free shipping in the U.S. and Europe. Uh, and you also get three solo keys. So that's actually really nice. I like that. They have so, the solo, yeah, the solo tap, the solo advanced protection, mm -hmm. and solo high NSA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's part of the thing. Yeah. It's completely open source. And so you mm -hmm. can hack it as much as you want if you're into that type of thing. And the big thing that sold it for me is like, oh, it's completely nfc completely battery free it's like those fobs that you can buy on amazon or wherever mm. but they actually have the okay so i have something that doesn't have nfc and i want to use it you just plug it into the usb there you go there's the key cool yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you know this is so, i love one thing i like about my yubi key it's just so much more convenient than having to go to my phone you know uh to uh, factor off and it's just you know, just plug it in, and there you are. <laughs> I can definitely dig it, and you can walk in, you can play the home game, just starting at $12. So yeah. mm -hmm. I don't normally recommend hardware, especially on Kickstarters. I don't even like pre-ordering, yeah. but 12 bucks, I'm like, eh, why not? It'll be a fun thing to have around. Best case scenario, get it for your friend. It'll annoy and confuse them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go, what, what's this? It, it's not like the USB pen drive. It doesn't store anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. From security to more security? Well, mm -hmm. security breaches, mm -hmm. or in this ah. case, an yes. exploit. Yes. Yes. So uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, 
concerning one. Uh, it's a trivial bug in XOR gives root permission on Linux and BSD systems. And basically what it is, is a privilege escalation that stands from um, incorrect command line parameter validations. Basically, if you send the log file argument and you pipe that not so cleverly through a bunch of other commands, you can basically run whatever you want because uh, X will just go, oh, no, wait, that's my command. I'm just going to run it. And then you'll end up running something that gives someone else access to your machine. And that is uh, that sounds scary, but then again, you shouldn't be copy-pasting stuff that you read off the internet. We've, we're all guilty of that. I was about to say three-quarters of the are. internet's got a problem. They're going to boot. But you really shouldn't yeah. be doing that. No, you Especially should not. now. Ever. No. <laughs> it terrifies me when I think about how many times I've just posted stuff, like in our Discord yeah. Which yeah. I'm not out to be malicious, but you know, even I type stuff wrong. I'm like, okay, blind paste. I'm like, whoo. Risky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh it's uh no, yeah. everything uh like everyone should be at least looking forward to uh Exorg 120. It's already out in some distros, so if you have uh Exorg 120 available in your repos right now, upgrade. Mm -hmm. Because this affects everything that's running um, version 1.19. So that's something to keep in mind, which is most of the distros nowadays. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And the uh, thing that got me in this particular article was the uh, BSD head person said that he was disappointed that the Exorg maintainer didn't warn them ahead of time that this was a thing and they, that mm -hmm. they would have included a fix. Yeah, R dear BSD person, you remember when you guys uh, pushed out the patches for Spectre and Meltdown way ahead mm -hmm. of everyone else because you wanted to be secure? Yeah, <laughs> that's why you didn't yeah. get the heads up. <laughs> 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 remember, yeah. kids, the best way to respond to uh, bad behavior is to be petty. <laughs> yes. It works. It works. <laughs> LGC cares. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, so um, uh, I, I was reading a, a couple other on this, on this topic, and uh, uh, one of the ones that Ars Technica was sta stating, um, and of course it says it in this article as well, that uh, on all other Nix OSs, um, with the exception of OpenBSD, it looks like you have, have to have an active council session to initiate the attack. In other yes. words, you have to have the keyboard and mouse in front of the computer. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course. So, so yeah, I. Yeah, in BSD, yeah. you could remotely <laughs> access it through SSH, which was a scary bit. Uh, yes. But it's, uh, yeah, for Linux, it's not that big a deal. And, of course, yeah. many distros already have 120 in the repo. So, update, people. <laughs> yeah, patch patch your stuff. D yes, and cp v6 is a thing <laughs> and it's also vulnerable uh, yes yeah. yes it is <laughs> so while we're on the patch train uh yes <laughs> the register in their um collection of uh scathing titles they named this article the d in system d stands for damn it an SCDHCP v6 packet can pwn a vulnerable Linux box. And yeah, it's uh, if you're using systemd, which you probably are, unless you're running dev1 or... Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Slackware? <laughs> Slackware. Slackware. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're running one of those, you're probably fine. But if you're running systemd and you have the uh, systemd networking daemon, systemd network d uh, enabled... You are vulnerable to set a uh, specially mm -hmm. crafted packet that someone can send uh, uh, after they've masked themselves as a DHCP v6 server, and then they can just run uh, out of bound, uh, out of bounds, not out of bounds. Uh, <laughs> they can just run all that stuff directly on your machine because your machine is saying, no, that's the DHCP server. I have to listen to what it says. Uh, no. So, yeah, it's um, scary for people who use um, public Wi-Fi's on a regular basis. Uh, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Chances are you're not going to have more than one DHCP server if you're just in your home network, unless you set one up yourself or you're doing something odd. But yeah, it's uh, it's mostly scary to anyone who takes their laptop out to a public Wi-Fi. So be careful and patch system yeah. D. It's already <laughs> been patched. <laughs> yes. So do, yeah. does this only affect people who have access to IPv6? Uh, yeah. Correct. So 11 people. <laughs> yeah. It was, people in public there's... Wi-Fi's are getting EP, IPv6's because yeah. they have to. There's well, a bunch a of different... Of mobile. <laughs> I mean, yeah, chances are your mobile yeah. device has got an IPv6, uh, your home yeah. stuff. Yeah. I was floored that Charter gave me an IPv6 address without having to fight him for it. And I was like, what? <laughs> okay, I'll yeah. take that. Um, I got one with Sky. Yeah, they usually do that with the gigabit routers. It's kind of That's fun. Thing. It's kind of neat. Yep. <laughs> so, um, Sean Davis, you might know him. He is the Zubuntu <laughs> mm -hmm. technical lead and XFCE core <laughs> dev. We tied it up XFCE 4.14 roadmap today to highlight the work that still needs to be done with 80 components tracked, 55, 100% completion. The others with a significant prog. Progress, yes. XFCE 414 is 80% done. And there's time for the last push. And they got the roadmap. That's put up. And now that XFCE 414 is 80% done, they should have the other 80% sorted in short order, I'm guessing. Yes, because XFCE mm -hmm. is comprised of 160%. Uh <laughs> Pedro doesn't know the joke. He'll go look it up on Google like after the show. Go, oh, okay. That was funny before I messed it up. Sorry, Vin. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't funny. No one else was laughing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Aww. Jill? So all components of the core will be ported to GTK3, which we've all been waiting for. So this will be really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to thank Renee yeah. in our show notes who also got the joke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, excellent. You had yeah. to go look for that one. <laughs> I didn't. It's right there next to the article in the show notes, Pedro. Yeah. You want to that, show that was, that was funny. He was saying steel. that yeah. XF burn was 35%. Whatever. And once Pedro <laughs> reads the joke, he'll stick A and 13 together and go, Oh, I got yeah. the joke. Nope, he doesn't get the joke. I yeah. just decided to make another one. Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to know what the joke here is? They have a little schedule at the top. It's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, it was sometime in 2015 we finished the uh, planning phase, Maybe. and then sometime in 2015 we extended the planning phase, planning and phase. currently yeah. we're in the development phase. Cool. So how about the next phase? Listen, when you're being hey, you're being timest. <laughs> 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 you know for a schedule it seems to be missing a lot of dates i don't know i'm trying to do that thing where i blindly defend the thing i use <laughs> like so many people do yeah. on the internet for no reason <laughs> it's it's a fun game i'm sorry uh, no i mean they man it has been a slog getting gtk3 yeah. Up and running. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And, you know, Joe pointed that out. And I was like, you know, they'll, they'll be 100% done with the core, like seven hours before GTK4 is finalized and it's pushed yeah. out. <laughs> yes. But no, I, I brought up Renee because he is uh, one of the people helping with XF burn, the burning mm -hmm. application, and no, yeah. getting that over to GTK3. And like he said, the last 80% on that is him learning GTK3 toolbars and mm -hmm. replacement for action groups. So, hey, mm -hmm. it's underway. And every time it's XFCE, I don't want the whiz -bang stuff. I want the perfect rock solid stability never crashes. That's that's yeah. the experiment that I want. Um, they could still use a bit more functionality, especially Thunar. That needs some yeah that food it's a <laughs> file manager you want it to julianne fries no i wanted to remember <laughs> different settings for different folders that's it that's all i ask for how's mm -hmm. that yeah. get off my lawn that's how that is <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez man why don't you just use like dolphin or something you know you can do i'm that. using kaha because mate mm -hmm. and it remembers per folder settings 
So it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> Gnome 2 already did it. Come on. <laughs> Youngins. Um, hey, beautiful people. <laughs> if you like uh, what we do, that is independent uh, podcasting. It's all that kind of fun stuff. And you would like to help support that. You can do that by coming over to LinuxGameCast.com forward slash support. Who do we have to thank this week, Jill? I think we got a couple of names. Yay. We got Frost Claw, who's returning as a Patreon. Yay, Frosty. <laughs> and we, our new one is Vertinog and Dirty Dean. Dumb. And Linux Gnuru is uh, is always helping us from uh, from Tanzania. What are you talking about? Linux Gnuru, yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, <laughs> I I am sorry. Yeah, Linux Gnuru is finally able to become a pa Patreon, even though he lives in Tanzania, and that he lives with the fiber baboons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a thing. That's something I wanted to throw in, and we yeah. decoded because. <laughs> Up until a couple of weeks ago, I think if you were using PayPal to like back your Patreon pledges, you had to have like a card yeah. tied to it. And now you can just do yeah. it straight up with uh, PayPal. But I was like, man, that's kind of awesome yes. that you could even support our nonsense and our shenanigans all the way from Tanzania. <laughs> that's yeah. really yeah. cool. And we want to thank everyone. I mean, if it's not just us, uh, independent mm -hmm. media, you know, you might not agree yeah. with everything we say, but you know, we're being honest about it. We're not collecting mm -hmm. checks. Not yet. I don't know, Pedro. <laughs> you get any checks? I didn't get any checks. Uh, not now, Microsoft. Go away. Buy a sign. Yes. Oh no. Uh, everyone making this possible, and we like to give some back. We'd like the whole value for value. You do get access to uh, a customized RSS feed. If you like Doctor Who, man, we get a treat for you. We do a game of Who recap every single week on top of our pre pre super shows, in which is our weekly production meeting where we sit down and talk about what's going on the show and things that are coming up in the future for like six minutes. Then we talk about video games and what we've been watching, mm -hmm. but it's definitely a fly. On. I think this one walks, uh, this one starts off Pedro with me screaming about kicking a chair mm -hmm. because I'm walking. The <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it deserved much, it. <laughs> it's pretty much that man. Uh, then we have our uncut early access for that, but, uh, thanks everyone making this possible. It is really neat. Oh, mm -hmm. I finally remembered to put stuff on the wish zone. I didn't, I couldn't think of much. So bear with me for that because if you, uh, skeletons don't work on Christmas, I mean, Halloween, Yay! it is same, the same thing for me. So you end up on Frank's, uh, fine upstanding cannibal wall. Get your mind out of the gutter. That's what that stands for. And, uh, all the beautiful people plus your name in the credits. All right. How about it's, Oh, Wait, here's the thing. You, you might know this, uh, and I, I mean the collective you. Mm -hmm. Do we, are we done with pumpkin flavored everything after today, or does that roll into November no. now? Is that just like no, nope, yeah, we're gonna ride that, this? Yeah, through that Christmas. rolls yeah. until like Christmas actually. Christmas, hits. <laughs> yeah. Too bad, pumpkin pie. <laughs> yeah, with pumpkin pie. pies. <laughs> Let's do a slice of pie. We got two little things to talk about this week. Yeah, this yep. is awesome. This blazing fast Raspberry Pi display driver will melt your face, then teach you <laughs> how it works. And uh, this is really awesome. Um, this is a display driver that lets you play games at 60 frames per second from a Raspberry Pi, of course, with the older games. But it looks it, it looks absolutely beautiful. And um, the name of the driver is FBCP ILI 934 one driver, um, which works with, with the SPI based, the serial peripheral interface based LCD displays for the Raspberry Pi A, B, 2, 3, and 0. And um, it's really neat because it actually works by, by only sending changed pixels for each frame instead of the full screen. So it doesn't have to send as much information to the screen, um, which makes it work a lot faster. And actually, a lot of video codec compressions um, use this technology. So yeah. I thought this was really ingenious that this is actually being used for a display driver. That's wonderful. What a, what a great way to use that technology. So yeah, there's really, one really thing cool. to keep in mind, though, especially with video games. And uh, you see that mm -hmm. every now and then whenever you're watching, say, a video on YouTube of someone playing a game. And every now and then there's a bit of smearing, especially mm -hmm. in like yeah. um, places with a lot of mm -hmm. leaves and a lot of trees. And that that greenness tends to leave a lot of smearing behind. 
That is going to be inevitable with a display driver that's basically keeping the pixels that it thinks <laughs> haven't changed on screen, but they actually have. So then you yeah. get the, oh, no, it's these pixels, so we'll just move them up <laughs> on the coordinates. Smear. <laughs> yes. So then we need de-interlacing on top of it. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something we've all experienced. Uh, if you go back and watch last week's uh, LGC Weekly, you will. It's even time stamped I had to in fix the my face. There's... Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Pedro did this. That's the thing. It was cute. It was adorable. Uh, I know. Since well, you know, there's a new version of a uh, sailfish that just came out recently, like yesterday or something like that. I missed that. No, I did not I know that. Like, That's neat because uh, it reminded me of our next story. Yes. Ooh. Not a banana phone. It's Pine 64 <laughs> and a phone running KDE plasma because reasons. Um, <laughs> you know about the Pine 64? It's hardware. Uh, they're famous for their single board computers like the Pine E64. Those things are wicked cheap. We're talking like 15, 20 what stinky caches. And they have the Pine Book, which is like an $89 laptop if you ever get it. Uh, mm -hmm. I just know a couple people waiting on theirs that like to remind me that, hey, I'm still waiting on mine. And I was like, I didn't tell you to buy it in the first place. So what is this business? Uh, well, they're going to be releasing the PinePhone developer kit. And it's going to be given to developers for free on November 1st. Uh, it's going to be a combo kit with a 64 board, the SO Pine module, seven inch touchscreen, camera, Wi-Fi, play box enclosure, lithium ion battery case, LTE, cat, USB, and a dongle and giggity. Sorry, I don't care. I'm going to have to say that. The target price, Pedro. The target price. All this plus more. <laughs> I like how they phrase it. One hundred yeah. plus. And dollars. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a broad number, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> it is a broad number, but when you actually consider that, like the Pine sixty four um, boards, they cost. I don't know, all of them are sub $25. So it's feasible that if they're careful with the parts that they choose and everything else, they could easily get away with a phone in the sub $200 range. But it will be a phone that for the exact same price, you could get a Xiaomi or a Huawei mm. phone that will absolutely trounce it when it comes to performance and the number of apps available for it because it'll be running android so keep in mind if this ever comes or at least the first few versions will be very much a early adopter hacker developer type of situation if you're just a user this is not going to be the phone for you <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it is really nice to have another linux phone and Space, definitely a competitor to the Librem phone. For people and, who like collecting yeah. Linux phones, that's let's yes. be honest. <laughs> it's not the phone. You may have to have... buy one of those secondhand Nexus fives and just load Put something on it. On that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, Selfish. <laughs> I don't really think it's ever been the hardware that, well, in some cases, has been hardware. Yes, but that's for the most part, yeah. it's the ecosystem. It's like you think about yeah. what do you use your mobile for? Then you're like, okay, well, I need these. You need these apps, and they're not there mm -hmm. unless you're going to be using the web pages, the web zones. So mm, we'll mm -hmm. see. Wish them the best of luck. If you'd like to yeah, wish no, us it's the always best of great luck, to Pedro, see. how could you do it? <laughs> well, you could do it uh, by uh, running up to us on the street and giving us a hug. Please don't do that. Nope, I tried uh, that, and you licked me. Never again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so unless you want a face full of my saliva, go to LinuxGameCast.com, fill out the uh, the contact form, make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box, and do like Frank did, and uh, send us a message. Uh, Frank's message reads, RARW? <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> be like Frank. Send us a message on LinuxGameCast.com, contact button, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. <laughs> okay. Jill, what do we got this week? Yeah. So this is a uh, tied in and um, MS Buntu <laughs> with international business machines buying Red Hat. I fully expect Microsoft to buy Canonical. <laughs> plan on using again. it. <laughs> yeah. Plan on using it still for hosting LWW? Question mark. Why? Yes. I run Arch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Titan. And I, I would 
if that happened, I would go with Debian, definitely. <laughs> as as my main uh, distro. Yeah. No officer. But, he shot me in the shoulder. By the way, I remarked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I use all distros, but for my main rigs, uh, I, I usually I use Debian based. <laughs> I would probably just for the sake of convenience roll back to Debian. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any undying allegiance to any particular. Yeah, it's Solus just would be good too. <laughs> not for me. Um, <laughs> Especially when not be hundred percent. But I say oh, that for an LTS. Desktop LTS canonicals kind of got everything on lock. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you need something that's going to be usable for that Debian, not Debian stable. I don't think I'm using that. <laughs> How about OS Warp 5 Linux based? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe with IBM pushing uh, Red Hat, maybe someone at the Fedora team, okay, maybe. We'll do an LTS type of thing. Because mm. there's people have been asking Fedora. It's like, so are you doing an LTS? Can we have an LTS? Is there an LTS yeah. coming? And uh, they've always said no, but maybe with the big corporate push and the big corporate money behind it, they yeah. could do it. I could see. I mean, there's a lot of people worried about stuff. And listen, the average person is going to be like, hundred percent because i'm saying this as somebody who was in that position i'm like why do you care about lts is new things coming out we're gonna run that mm -hmm. and for a gang of like my home use Reasons. for my life yeah. that was perfect that worked hey i got i got new things to fix and let's, let's be honest we like fixing things uh that doesn't work when you have to build a system that has to work four days a yeah. week or five days exactly. a week exactly and you Reliably. don't have any time to kill <laughs> right you, you need stable yeah <laughs> So, uh, I guess we, we, we all decided that we'd be using Arch, right? Is that where we ended up on that? <laughs> Antergos. I'll use Antergos. No, I actually wanted to use like something difficult. Antergos makes it too easy. I want to run like Arch. <laughs> actually, um, I would use Slackware as well. Very stable. When, once you get it set up the way you want, it's very stable. Oh, Zenwalk. <laughs> I might go back and just fire up Zenwalk. <laughs> You know, yeah. I, I would take a Slack <laughs> attack. Uh, oh, man, I don't get some love for this over Susie on the desktop. Susie, you don't belong on the desktop. I've tried you too many times. This is not mm -hmm. a good... Nothing but respect mm -hmm. from the lovely people out there running it as a desktop. I mean, you, you're made of different stuff. And this is a family show, so mm -hmm. I can't tell you what that stuff oh, yeah. is. Um, <laughs> what if Windows was a Linux distro? It's called OpenSUSE. Just try it. <laughs> Microsoft by uh, here's the one thing that I would genuinely without you know we're joking or not we're having a good time talking about this yeah. um mm -hmm. with IBM making the play it's like okay Red Hat man uh it does kind of put Microsoft in a position like okay we we need to put our stamp on something and say ours yeah yeah no Canonical is a prime target there it is again it is. and uh <laughs> I got some Considering friends that work for Canonical, and I'm going to be so happy if that happens. Just, just giving them so much crap. I love them to death, and I'll continue to love them. But, ooh, that's going to be sweet. Yeah, yeah Apple could totally Wait. buy BSD and just say, no, that's ours now. Well, one of the nothing, biggest so. issues Canonical has had in its past is its marketing. And they've really, they're really stepping it up now. And um, that's making a big, a big difference. <laughs> So obviously, you know, because mm. they're number one in the space. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We're going to bounce out of here. I want to thank everyone for showing up in this specu spectacular, spooptacular, ooky, spook. Hey, man, we got a skill. Deal with it. Ah. <laughs> Spooky ooky. Yay. Wow. Yay. <laughs> it's terrifying. That's horrifying, Jill. I'll never recover from that. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Throw some credits. Oh, <laughs> and Linux Skinner, I'm so happy you can. You're one of our patrons now, and you don't have to just send us money via PayPal. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, that's but awesome. The 21st century has finally reached Tanzania. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. 
Yeah. Yay. And of course, um, for some reason, Frostclaw, our uh, most faithful Spanish viewer, for some reason, yes. decided to ignore all the negative comments I've ever made about the Spanish people. <laughs> and actually, it was funny. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Frost is wonderful. <laughs> it's just, it's nice to have him back again. <laughs> Created by Spooky Brad. Yay! Spooky. <laughs> All right. Everybody mug for the camera. So we got the show. <laughs> that was good, Ben and Pedro. That was really good. <laughs> 